space is sins and we are back with more chaos child and we are just continuing october 12th 2015 monday oh sure we just we're we got attacked by the fire flame lady and uh Producer was telling us about Mina Misawa. And then we kind of cut off there, I think. Anyway. Shinjo looked up at the huge white building and sighed loudly. <sighs> A.H. Tokyo General Hospital. Oh, sorry. I'm going to almond in my teeth. Hmm. Hold on. I just had like three almonds. Two seconds before I know they're all in my teeth. I don't know why I do that. Like, oh, I'll just put in away dinner stuff, blah, blah, blah. Grab a couple almonds and then like, no, there's just almonds in my teeth. It was going to make me swallow a lot. Anyway, after Kurusu's report, he decided to visit it himself. It was almost midnight. Visiting hours were long over and he didn't have an official warrant. He was here entirely of his own volition. But as he saw it, he was never getting a warrant the usual way. So this was his only shot. Wait a minute. After Karusu's report? When did Karusu tell him anything? <laughs> did he mean Kunisato? Because, like, she was the one that we kidnapped the girl and, like, whatever, but maybe that's what he meant. I mean, I know Karusu's involved now, but, like, she wouldn't have reported to him. Well, anyway. Normally, he'd want to slowly, painstakingly build up a case, but it seemed to him that searching this hospital was so important that there just wasn't time to spare. First, I need to see if what Mino... Um, yeah. I was looking at Kunisato when her name came up. Mino. Anyway. Yes, it was Kunisato. Okay. First, I need to see if what Mio Kunisato said is true. If I can do that, I should be able to get as many warrants as I want. After his own investigations, he'd found that something strange had started happening here in 2007, two years before the earthquake. At the time, there was a treatment facility in Shibuya called Arc Heart Medical Association. Yeah, didn't it say heart or something on top of uh, Yuki's like chart thingy? It said, I saw that. Maybe it said Arc Heart too. I don't know. I thought it said heart, and I was like, huh. Anyway. Mm, uh, uh, Arc Heart Medical Association that was involved in some kind of cult. On the surface, it was a mental health clinic staffed with talented doctors from university hospitals. Hey! Don't start getting an, an attitude now. There was no way to know what they'd actually been doing, but evidently some people had suspected that they were brainwashing troubled patients. Hi! Yeah? You could chirp nice. You've been quiet for like the last hour. But suddenly, the facility was reborn as a hospital with a non-profit assisted living facility. And all the doctors that Arkhart and Medical had fired were rehired at A.H. Tokyo General Hospital. Not twice. A.H. Arkhart Tokyo General Hospital. That makes sense. I was wondering, like, why is it A.H.? And then six years ago, there was the new generation madness. The fifth victim in that case, Fumio Takashina. Takashina the victim of a so-called brain-dead case who'd been kept alive for a week after his brain was removed. Ha! Oh! How? He'd worked at A.H. Tokyo General Hospital. Huh. What's with all these creepy coincidences? There was too much that seemed suspicious. What would they have done at a time like this? And then he shook his head. Do it your own way. That's what they would have said. Either way, if he could get proof of what was in this facility's basement, the case would take a whole different turn. Even if there was something big lurking in the shadows behind this case, if he presented incon incontrovertible proof, the police would have no choice but to act. I'm just thinking in my head, I hope he doesn't die. I like Shinjo, okay? He's not like, well, he's the douchebag cop and he's gonna... But please don't kill Shinjo. It wasn't just about the facility, after all. There were a lot of people involved, too. The lives and dignity of the victims who'd been turned into test subjects also mattered. The next murder doesn't happen for a while, though. Isn't it the end of October? 
Experimenting on humans, huh? Disgusting. Every year, almost 100,000 people went missing. If some of them had been forced into these experiments, that was a big problem. Hey! Okay, let's get this over with. His voice was somehow relaxed, yet driven as he headed into the hospital. You can talk nice. I know you're capable of it. Don't get so feisty we have to put you in the other room. No. Be nice. Why don't you go talk to... Why are you just sitting on the water bottle? Why are you just sitting there? It's the weirdest place for you. What, do I have to sit here and, like, turn around and, like, sit like this and then you think I'm talking to you but I'm not? He learned and memorized the location of the facility from Kunisato. He snuck in from the ER loading zone and headed to the basement. I'm reading it off my computer screen so he thinks I'm talking to him. I'm just half-facing him. So, you know, my back isn't turned to him. So there you go. Maybe that'll keep him. He's over there just beep, 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 beep to himself. Beep, beep, beep to himself. What? What? You want attention? Everyone's paying attention to you now. It's the you show. Yeah, it's the you show all about you. Come on, be entertaining. <laughs> the temperature there was clearly different from the areas above. And then he went into the autopsy room. He sometimes makes pretty chirpy noises. And he screams. It's annoying. I remember right. This is where the entrance is. He opened the breaker box and saw the card reader inside. So this is it. He held out the card key that Kunisato had given him. And he heard the sound of an opening door. Hi. I see. So something big's happening here. There was a hidden staircase in the back of the autopsy room. What you doing? A part of him hadn't believed it until he'd seen it for himself. But now he was essentially sure. See, like, when he talks, like, you can hear, I know you can hear him, because I know you can hear him when he screams, but, like, you can hear his, like, li like loud chirpies. They're really pretty. Like, and every once in a while, if he was, like, like, gets a little squawky when he's talking to himself, like, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. It's the, for, like, an hour. Or just all fucking day. That. It's that fucking noise. No. You know better. And that was probably my fault for making that noise, but you know better. You start being good. You've had a fairly good day. You've been a little obnoxious once in a while, but not like the other day where you just wouldn't fucking stop. See, that's why you're, in, you're not being put in the other room with the door shut. <laughs> Uh, a part of him hadn't believed it until he'd seen it for himself, but now he was essentially sure. If you came here to play this cohesively and not stop and talk to the birds constantly, you are on the wrong place, obviously, because we gotta placate the little asshole over there. A normal hospital wouldn't need something like this. He's been fine for the last couple of parts, you know what I mean? Like, but... He has these moments where he starts getting, like, feisty, and then it's like, all right, if I just pretend I'm looking at you, maybe you're fine. Phew. Shinjo stopped for a moment to take a breath, then headed down the stairs. He goes over and plays with his mirror, and then he's usually good. Oh, there he goes. Good. There was an old hallway at the bottom. It smelled of mold and dust. When he turned on his penlight, he saw that it was an old facility, and the walls were falling apart. Yeah, if he's looking at himself in this one of his mirror toys, he's generally fine and he doesn't scream as much. Because he doesn't give a shit. He's talking to a bird in the mirror. But, like, when he's just sitting there wanting Neelix or I to, like, play with him. Like, I can't always play with you, bird. Plus, you're mean. You don't want to come over. I can't just stand there by the cage. Like, what the fuck? Anyway. But this place is still being used. So I did read that, right? When you turn the home. Okay. Okay. We should be fine for now. If no one visits a building, it rots away. Unless someone uses it every day, it won't last long. But this place was different. He was old, but he was nearly certain someone was using it. I think she said it's up this way. Oh, God, watch out for the lady with the carriage. Shinjo followed the directions that Kunisato had given him as he headed toward his goal. His first stop was the monitoring room, which would have critical information on the facility. 
He wanted the data on the computer there. And then he wanted to find the room where the victims of the experiments were being kept. Oh, this makes me so scared for him. He turned down many corridors as he headed for his destination. <clears throat> the cell-like rooms he saw on the way concerned him, but they could wait for later. Right now, his biggest job was to get the evidence he needed. This must be the place. Shinjo finally found the spot he was looking for. He used his card key to unlock the door. Then he swallowed and put his hand on the doorknob. When he got inside, he saw... What? Damn it! He quickly ran to the other room. The prison where y you know, Yuki Yamazoi had kept the test subjects. Everything's gone. You're kidding me? This can't be. This can't be! They cleared it out. He quickly found the room and flung open the door. And then he stood still in astonishment. There was... <sighs> I knew it. Nothing there. No victims, no beds. None of the things that Kunisato had told him about. The monitoring room had been empty, too. There were no security cameras, no computers. That's a lot of shit to move, but nothing at all. All that remained was the simple fact that there was nothing left at all. It's been a day or two, right? No, the 10th is when Watabe died. It was like... We did it maybe the 11th. Oh, quick saved, huh? Um, so I think that's quick save when we turn to certain scenes, but. I usually notice it when we go to the, the title card things, but. So we must have gone the night after. I don't think we went on the 10th. We must have gone on the, I don't remember all the days that are happening, but we might have gone the night before. So like, as soon as they were like, Yama's always gone, they were like, pack up the shit. Hey, Miyashiro, you're going to the club today, right? Of course. I want to go over a lot of things with the case. Okay, let's go. Oh, sorry. Go on ahead without me. What? You got something to do? Well, I'm on cleaning duty today. I pointed to the other students who were moving the desks and sweeping the floors. Yeah, but, you know, why do they make the students do the cleaning? You got that right. It's only a few countries, including Japan, that make their students do the cleaning. Uh, but I bet you're more responsible. Because they don't make... I mean, sure, that gives somebody a job. Because then you're paid to clean the school. Right? Because then you have janitors and cleaning staff that are then hired. And so those people have jobs. So, sure, great. Although, a lot of people in America, I'm too good to clean freaking shit. So, that doesn't really fucking help. Uh, but also, kids are fucking douche canoes. I'm going to scratch on desks. I'm going to put gum under there. I'm going to do this. If you had to clean that shit up, you wouldn't fucking do it, would you? Like, I'm going to throw my gum under the on the floor and then I'm going to step in it. Like, if someone made you do that. Or, I'm sorry. I'm not going to clean up after my dog. Okay, well, now that you let your dog take a shit, I'm going to take your foot and I'm going to smush it in it. And now you go have to clean up your shit. Oh, because you didn't want to clean up your dog shit. If every single person who didn't clean up after their fucking dog stepped in dog shit constantly, they would fucking clean up their dog shit. All I'm saying. If you are always putting gum under shit, and yet you had to scrape gum off shit, you wouldn't be putting gum, on, gum under shit, would ya? So, you know, you kind of learn to take care of shit when you're the one that has to clean all that shit. And you're like, um, yeah, I don't want to just throw all my trash and shit all over the floor because I have to pick it up later. So, you know, kind of teaches you to be a little bit more responsible, I'm just saying. <coughs> I'm not sure about cleaning the floors and shit, like moving the desks and everything, but like, yeah, doing some kind of shit like that teaches you some kind of responsibility that I'm I would guess because I don't know again you learn when you have to clean up shit yourself that like I don't like cleaning up dog shit so don't get a dog or uh I don't really want to clean dog shit off the bottom of my shoes so maybe I should pick up my dog shit but it's never those people it's always you that steps in the dog shit that somebody else's dog leaves behind because people are assholes but I'm just saying anyway Oh, stop, stop. I don't need to hear it. Uh, okay, see you later. <clears throat> Ow. Sheesh. Ugh, sorry. I had to cough. Time to get this finished and head to the club room. Hmm. I saw a scrap of paper lying on the floor next to the garbage bin. Like this, you know? Someone had probably tried to throw it in the wastebasket and missed, then left it there. 
I really wish they'd think about the people that had to do the cleaning before they did that. See? <coughs> and if you're the person that's to do the cleaning, you'd think about that. I'm sorry. There's something in my throat. Hold on. I gotta get a drink. Sorry. Good lord. I think it was like a piece of almond went that was like stuck in my teeth, went down my throat, and then just got stuck there. Anyway. This has been a hell of a part. This has been like the worst fucking 15 minutes, hasn't it? We've read like two minutes worth of thing, talked to the bird, freaking chokes to death. Well, this I'm like not good today. Anyway. <sighs> I took a quick look around. There was another student named Tanaka right nearby who was mopping up the floor. Unfortunately, there was no one else around. Okay, let's try this. I visualized a scrap of paper lifting off the ground. It was more difficult than you'd think. If you lost your concentration for even a moment, it wouldn't work. Well, can I do it? I took the scene I'd imagined and tried to strike Tanaka with it. And then... Yes! The scrap of paper floated upward, just like I'd imagined. And then it floated into the garbage can. Nice. I did a little victory pose. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Uh huh? Tanaka was looking around in surprise. She looked at me a little afraid. Hey, Miyashiro? Yes, what is it? Did I just see a piece of paper move into the garbage can on its own? Huh? Like, you know, it went in without anybody touching it. Huh? No way, you must have been mistaken. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Still, she stared at the garbage can unsatisfied. Uh, um, I'd like to go throw out the garbage. Is that okay? Huh? Y yeah, sorry. I took the garbage can out into the hallway. Phew. More. I wanted to use this power more. Not in the middle of school, idiot. Ooh, chapter seven! The Resistance 2. Oh, it was. The Resistance Part 1 was the last chapter. Ooh! Okay, the first couple of chapters are really long, and the other ones seem to go faster. We only have, like, four more chapters before we get, like... I don't know if we get into another, like, kind of a route, or if we have... This is like, okay, that was just... Now you did that, now you have to go back through and get... Pick a thing. Anyway. Everybody here... It had already been three days since Arimura and I had been attacked by the pyrokinetic. We'd been worried that she might attack us again, but until now, nothing had happened. Thanks to that, we'd finally calmed down, and today I was feeling good enough to revisit what we knew about the case. But first, before we get started, let me introduce you... Hey there! I'm Hinai Arimura, and I'm always smiling. It's so nice to meet you all. Ito's like, what? Another fucking girl? God. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. I was trying to clap, but you can't hear it. Might not have been able to, I don't know. It was still hard to keep up with the way her mood seemed to change all the time. Serika was applauding, but no one else was. Well, Kazuki doesn't... She barely blinks, so... Kazuki was playing ESO2 or some other game, like she always did. She turned around to take one look at Arimura, then went back to her computer screen... <laughs> Um, Arimura isn't actually joining the newspaper club. She's just helping us. I'm in the lit club, actually, but there's no need to sweat the details. I'll be coming by as much as I can. For what it's worth, I'd already told all the newspaper club members about Arimura's power. They were- wait. Wait, 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 wait. I had already told them about her powers. They, except for Kazuki, were all there when Kunisato told- uh, so- I mean, Kazuki was the only one not there. So. Hey, hey, Hina, can I ask you something? Sure. Oh, but my measurements are a maiden's secret. I don't really know if I care about Arimura's measurements. The hell did you just say, asshole? And then her mood changed again. Which is the real you, Hina? Sometimes you're cheerful, and sometimes you're serious, and sometimes you're scared. Well, which do you think it is? Hmm. 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 <laughs> Come on.
come on. You don't have to think about it that hard. But what I can tell you is that knowing when somebody's telling the truth is a lot harder than you think, Sari. If you don't mess around a little, you can't survive. Hmm. Sarika seemed lost in thought, as if she didn't really understand. Oh, right. You. Hazuki jumped a little. Hey, hey, you. You're a first year, right? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, sorry. Can you say that out loud for me? Oh, Hina, don't say that. Hana doesn't talk. Huh? She doesn't? You're like, actually, she did my fantasy one time. And she had a weird Irish accent. It was bizarre. And they're like, huh? I, look, I don't know. Hmm. Do you mean she can't talk? No, I don't think that's the case. She just really doesn't want to. Even we've never actually seen her talk. Huh, I see. Arimura stared at Kazuki's face. Okay, okay. Um, Hana Kazuki, right? So can I call you Hana? Hmm. Okay, Hana, nice to meet you. I thought Arimura might have found it difficult to get along with Kazuki, but maybe I was wrong. Since Kazuki didn't talk, it might actually make it easier for her, since she didn't have to worry about knowing if she was lying. Okay, let's get started. Wait, before that, there's something I have to tell you. Kurusu is... Sorry, I'm late. Kurusu opened the door and came inside. Here. Her injury had healed, and Dad had told her that it was okay for her to move around, so she'd come back to school today. Yeah, uh, Vice President... Have you started already? No, we definitely haven't been talking about the case. It's okay, Ido. Huh? Kurdish is going to help us solve the case. Huh? She is? I showed her my die sword. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, alright, alright. You know what? I know, I know. The very first one, episode or two. Oh my god, why are we such a pervy asshole? Now I'm being the pervy asshole. You know what? Like, I just... Pervy asshole grew on me, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. Yes? I guess you could say it's my job to keep an eye on you. Kurusu glanced at me for just a moment, worried. But it was only a moment, and then she was back to normal. Anyway, let me hear your opinions on the case thus far. If there's anything that's even a little off, I'll gladly point it out. The meek attitude she'd had when she'd been hurt was gone, and she was back to her usual self. Ito's shoulders slumped, but at the same time, he looked a little happy. She was always obnoxious, and at times a little annoying. Exactly. But it's, uh, but this is the way everybody wanted Kurusu to be. I mean, that's kind of how we've grown to know her, you know? Okay, now that everyone's here, I'd like to start the meeting. But first, there's something I want to show you all. Hmm? What's that? I've only shown this to Onoe and Kurusu so far. It doesn't work 100% of the time, so it might fail, but... Everyone confusing. Ito, Kazuki, and Arimura looked at me in confusion. I nodded and grabbed a pen, then put it on the table. I tried my best to focus. And then just like the scrap of paper earlier, I imagined the pen moving. Here's the hard part. Can I do it? As I focused as hard as I could, I saw it slowly appear in the corner of my eye. Okay, there it is. Now all that was left was to imagine my delusion infecting everyone else. The next moment, the pen started to jerk upwards. It's got a little, like, cat head or something on it. It's super cute. I love it. Huh? Whoa! Hmm? Well, three of them raised their voices in surprise as the pen slowly moved upwards. Phew. When I stopped imagining the floating pen, the die sort of disappeared from my field of vision, and the pen slammed back down on the table. Wow, Miyashiro, that's incredible! Kazuki's just nodding. And just like I said, it's not perfect yet, but... When did you learn to do that? Oh no, I helped me try a bunch of different things. Ito gasped in amazement. 
When the pyrokinetic attacked me, I was forced to accept that I really was a psychic. After that, I decided to master my power instead of running away from it. And I'd gone through a lot of trial and error to do so in, like, two days. Or what do you say, three? Anyway. At first, I tried to do it on my own, but that didn't go well. No, it's really only been, like, two. And then I remember what Kunasato had said. She said that a gigalomaniac accomplished a real boot, a real boot by transmitting his delusions into the dead spots of another person's brain to create what she called a shared reality. Well, wait a minute. Didn't we just say earlier, like, oh, it'd been a few days since we got attacked by the pyrokinetic, but it's the 12th. And on the 10th, that was the day that Watabe died. We ran into her. It's only been two days. How in the fuck have we done all this shit? Did we, like, go into the hospital, break into the hospital the day Watabe died? We had time for that shit? And then the 11th, we went to school, and they got attacked by the pyrokinetic, and now it's the next day, and we're like, it's several days later. It's Watabe died on October 10th. It's only the 12th. What the fuck? The timeline is so bizarre. Like... Like, I know he died earlier in the day, but I didn't think we went and snuck into the hospital that night. I mean, may no, we might have. We might have snuck into the hospital that night with Ido, and I'm trying to think back because it's just so much happens, and it just seems like there's no way it happens in a matter of, like, six hours, but it might have been because we left Kurusu. She was like, don't leave. And we're like, peace out. And then we left because we said we had to find our phone. So maybe that's. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Because she was like, you got, you went to the police station again. And we were like, yeah. And she's like, stop doing this. He's like, oh, okay, but I have to get my phone. And then we went to the hospital and broke in. Blah, blah, blah. But it had to have been the next day when we got attacked by the pyrokinetic. There's no way we broke into the hospital, found out. No, because remember, we slept all day. Like. We found out late that night, so it was the 11th when we got attacked, and he just said today, which is the 12th, a couple of days ago. No, it was yesterday. It was literally yesterday. I mean, I believe that Kuna, like uh, Kurusu is healed because it's been several days since she got stabbed, because she got stabbed at least, like, and her wound probably wasn't with the stitches and everything. I mean, she's it's been at least two or three days. That seems a little bit fast, but, like, whatever. Maybe it wasn't a deep wound, you know? It could have been more. I don't remember. But she at least got stabbed before the 10th. Well, no, she got stabbed before that because we had to say we had to help on the 9th. So she might have gotten stabbed on like the 8th or something. So it's been several days. So, okay. That I believe. But it's not been several days since the pyrokinetic and we're all calmed down. It's literally been a day. I'm just saying. So timeline's weird. I just hate it when they do that. Like, do you remember the other day? It was five minutes ago. Or remember yesterday? You mean six months ago? Like, time is always weird in games, and it drives me crazy, because you're like, I already can't keep track of the timeline, and then you literally say the other day when it's something that happened six months ago. Or, like, you know, this, a couple of days ago, it was last night. That's not... It's weird! It's like, they don't know the timeline when they're writing the game, and it's kind of weird. I don't know. Anyway, it tweaks me out a little bit, because it makes me confused. And then we have to have ten-minute conversation. This has been a weird part! Anyway... Hmm. That meant that if I didn't have someone to share my delusion with, it wouldn't work, right? So when I started practicing with Sarika, things began to go much better. But, Miyashiro, you know that if you start using that power for fun, nothing good's gonna come of it, right? is right. I, I know that. I'm just doing this to protect everyone. Huh. I hope so. I just wanted to show you guys. I was telling the truth. I'd managed to turn back the pyrokinetic's flames at the last second. That was the only reason we survived. But that was only a coincidence born out of desperation. If she was going to come after me again, I needed to master my power. That's why I decided to practice like this. And the thing is, is like, Arimura practices her power all the fucking time. Only because she can't help it. Like, people are like, I hate pink. And she's like, bullshit, you love pink. Wait. Like, she can't help that it's on, you know what I mean? Maybe. I feel like hers just happens, you know? But, you know, it's weird. Suddenly, Sarika frowned. 
She was fiddling with her Gerdo Froggy strap like she always did when she was thinking about something. Oh, that's weird. You know, Sarika, you may be able to make sense of what you're saying inside your own head, but the rest of us can't. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, Hina can tell if someone's telling the truth, right? And Taco can move objects. I was just wondering why everybody has different powers. Oh. I never thought about that before. She had a point. Why did different people have different powers? Why do different people have different personalities? Why do different people have different eye colors or hair colors? Human beings are different. Why do we all have different dreams? Our brains are different. We're different people. Makes sense. We have different powers because they developed in the brain differently. It's not that fucking far of a stretch. Come on. Kunosato hadn't said anything about that. It'd be like the same thing. Like, you do something to someone's, like, I'm going to give you a, like a, do something to your brain here and it's going to react, people are going to, it's going to affect people differently. You know what I mean? Like, like the same illness, like, you're, ten different people all get the flu and they, it could be the exact same strain of the flu and they're all going to have different symptoms. Some people might get really sick. Other people don't get sick. Their bodies fight up. Like, you know what I mean? Every body is different. Every brain is different. So, like, your body and brain chemistry and all that shit, like, zap with power. Oh, now you got magic powers. What power is it? We mutated differently, okay? That's basically it. We're all just different forms of mutants. Hello? Have they never seen the fucking X-Men? Jesus Christ. Never watched any fucking science sci-fi shows? God. I mean, seriously. And another thing. When did you get this power? Were you born with it? Maybe it was Maybelline. That was another thing I've been wondering about. Now, that is that is one of those wet, when did it happen, how did it happen? Not the, but why is it different? Well, every person is different. That makes sense, so. Miyashiro, what about you? I don't know. I didn't know that I had this power until a very short time ago. So honestly, I don't know. But I always knew I was special. And what about you, Arnimura? I think one came to me after the Shibuya earthquake. After that, I just suddenly could tell when people were lying. So in Arnimura's case, she suddenly became able to tell if people were lying after the Shibuya earthquake. Does that mean that the earthquake's involved somehow? I mean, the magic lights? I'd have to look into that eventually. Also, as to Siri's question, why different people have different powers, I have an idea about that. Or when is it? I think it's because of their wish. Their wish? Hmm? Yeah. Yep, something happened to me during the earthquake, and the next thing I knew, I was like this. Something happened? Ah, oh, come on. You know, I wanted to know the truth. Don't make me spell it out. It's embarrassing. No, it's not really embarrassing. And what do you mean you wanted to know the truth? What happened? Jeez, you're such a nosy pervert. W why? <laughs> Call it a maiden secret, so no more questions. None. When Arimura was like this, I knew I wasn't going to get anything out of her. Like, she just flips around. Like, anyway, let's go over what happened so far. I feel like they do that so that, like, she's like, I have an idea of why. And they're like, because, like, if you bring it up and she just doesn't say anything... And then later she's like, I have an idea why. They're like, why the fuck didn't you say that when we asked about it three days ago, bitch? You know what I mean? You'd be like, what the fuck? But then she's like, I think I know. And they're like, why? Because like, wish? What do you mean a wish? I'm not telling you! And then she like kind of has a flip out and you're like, okay, so her weird flip floppy personality, you're like, okay, anyway. And then later it'll come out when it needs to. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> but you're like, what the fuck? Are we going to find out later? Anyway. Anyway, let's go over what's happened so far. So it almost sounds like maybe she wanted to know the truth about something. Like, I want to know the truth. What happened during the... Like, and it was during the earthquake or whatever. And then she somehow then developed that ability. And maybe for us, like... I wanted to be able to, like... Well, I mean, like, we were dragging Serica. Maybe we were like, I wish she was lighter. This is hard. I wish I could just magically get her there. Like, it was easier to carry her, like telekinetically move her or something or I wish I could have moved that beam that was on that poor kid that I saw you know what I mean like strong enough to move that beam and it turned into telekinesis you know and then 
psycho girl over there was like, I want to burn the fucking world! And then, you know, now she has powers. Be careful what you wish for. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, let's go over what's happened so far. All the victims in the return of the new generation madness cases have one thing in common. We know what... <clears throat> we know what that is, right? Yep. Just like I guessed before, they were all psychics. And I said this before, and I was totally like, whatever about it. But like, now... Like, now I actually believe it. And the first victim, in the don't look at me case... Oh, shit. Uh, but that's the... Uh, was famous for being able to predict the future. That's this one. That's the other dude, and that's... Scoops. Okay, yeah, that's this one. <laughs> I had to read them first, because I'm like, they're all magic abilities. Yes, he could probably see the future. Next, the leaky noise victim. She... I don't think these matter here, but I think later on... In certain um, scenarios, you're supposed to get them all wrong to get bad endings. <laughs> like, Trance, you mean like anybody listening to her felt really good? <clears throat> yeah, probably something like that. In other words, she was a able to control how people felt with her music. Next, the victim in the revolving dead case, he... That was this one, Reclidens Minds. I think this Kakita guy was a telepath. Yes, that's right. That's what he said to me. And as for the victim in the Gotsuon death... Gotsuon death, yeah. Death case, sorry. I... But I wanted to choose it! Psychic photography. Able to get scoops. That's right. All of Watabe's famous scoops were taken from angles and places that should be impossible. He was probably using psychic photography. How do we even know what that is? I, you're like, oh, I get it, but I don't. <laughs> like, You're like, psychic photography. Okay, but also, what? Like, it makes sense. Like, when you say psychic photography, you just create an image in your mind. You're like, okay, I get what they're trying to say with that. Like, you can infer what it means, but at the same time, you're like, I've never heard of that before. Like, are you making shit up now? Like, so it's just like I said, don't you get the sense that all these powers have a wish involved? A wish, huh? Otani, the victim in the Don't Look at Me case, was a Nikonia streamer that became a popular vocal became a pop okay, was able to become famous. Okay, so that's different. I want to be able to become famous. So he does that. From what Shinjo said about uh Takayanagi, the girl from Leaky Noise case, she became a popular vocalist. Okay. Like, I mean, so these wishes make sense. Like, man, I've been really struggling with my band. I wish I could become a popular vocalist. And then all of a sudden, now she has a magic voice. Wanted to succeed in business. They're specific. What was ours? Like, obviously, she wanted to know the truth. What was ours that we ended up, like, I can move things with my mind? I just really wanted to be special. You know what I mean? Like... I wanted to be able to unlock doors and shit, like, make shit happen. Like, I don't know, like, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, Kakita from the Revolving Dead case. Him, I don't know. Arnie Murdo, do you know anything? I mean, hello. He didn't talk about it much. I guess there was a lot of backstabbing at his job. But once he got his power, he didn't have to worry about that anymore. Become successful. Obviously. Like, we already know that. That's all the post-it. Like, do you have any ideas? There's two post-its over there, dude. They do that so that the case, so that you can fuck up the other ones or whatever. And as for Watabe from the Gotsu on death. They do make these kind of obvious. The beginning ones, I was like, oh god, I don't remember which picture was which. And you have to try to figure out which one was some of from the earlier murders, right? But these ones are pretty easy. <laughs> like, but anyway. Well, we're going to have to fuck them up at some point. I see. Looking at it, you may be right. In other words, their wishes had an effect on their powers? She's like, I make wishes all the time that you would stop being an asshole, and that hasn't worked yet. Does that mean that your power comes from a wish too, Miyashiro? Have you ever wanted to be able to move things without touching them? 
No, I... I couldn't think of any reason why I'd want that power. Oh! I think I know! Ataku, remember after the earthquake when you were in a coma for so long? Oh. Come to think of it, you had a really hard time even walking back then. Just like Kurusu said, I've been badly injured during the earthquake. And we dragged frickin' Serika. That's actually kind of interesting. We were so injured, we were in a coma. Right? But we managed to get Serika to the hospital. After the earthquake. So we managed to, like, drag her ass there and then just... What, we just passed the fuck out? Like, wow. Huh. Mm, even after I walk up for the... Okay, I don't remember if I read that. Okay. Even after I'd finally woken up from my coma, just walking was incredibly painful. It was bad enough that it would take tens of minutes just to grab something a few feet away. I'd hated that, and I'd wished a thousand times that the thing I was trying to get would just come to me. And that's where my power came from? Makes sense. We can assume your theory... We can assume your theory that these powers come from wishes is right, then. But then that woman, the one who attacked us, her power comes from some wish, too? Did she want to burn something? What could she want to burn so badly? Maybe she wanted to roast yams. This is really a time to be telling jokes. No, Ito. Ser oh, s uh, uh. Seri seriously believes that. Seriously? Huh? Did I say something strange? Yeah. Yeah, you did, Serika. Well, whatever. We can't worry about why she became a pyrokinetic. We can worry about why she became a pyrokinetic another time. There's one other problem we have to think about with her. Something important. I looked at the faces of everyone in the room. Whether she's behind all the murder so far. She'd clearly been trying to kill us. But that didn't mean that she was behind all the murders. I looked back at the board. Kazuki, get the thing I asked for. Hmm. I took the image that I'd asked Kazuki to print out for me. Nobody's been talking about it because of the return of the new generation badness, but there's been a string of recent arson cases in Shibuya. Everyone seemed to know this. They nodded. Good job, newspaper club. I'm going to compare the arson sites with the location of the murders so far. First, here's where the Don't Look at Me case took place. And here's where the arson was. Wow! Right? Next, the Leaky Noise case. It was here. I think it's where the blue pin maybe is. Or maybe where the middle pin is? I'm not sure. No, it's probably... Well... Now we overlay the location of the arson fire. There's a bunch of little arsons. Wait, are you serious? And then the Love Hotel where Revolving Dead happened. There were also suspicious fires set around the Love Hotel. Okay, the pin where the end of the, where the blue end is where it is. It's just there's so many freaking pins in here. It's hard to tell. They're all concentrated, yeah. That's right. Now, now as you all know, the Gozo on death took place at her school. And then when you overlay the locations of the fires, that's kind of amazing, right? You can get a better feel for it by looking at the whole map. Sorry, buddy. Wow. I was surprised, too, when I first noticed it. And in light of all this, we can assume that there's some connection... Oh, we can assume there's some connection between the murders and the arson cases, huh? Yeah. It's too much of a match to be a coincidence. That woman has some connection to the murders. When I finished, Sarika said... Wow, you're amazing, Taku! That wasn't her voice, but whatever. But everyone else seemed lost in thought. Any objections? I wouldn't call it an objection, but... Can I say something? No. Kurusu raised her head. Yeah, go ahead. Well... She stood up in such a way as not to put pressure on her injury, and then moved in front of the board. 
to check something. The woman who attacked you, her power was... Pyrokinetic. Yes. Her power lets her control fire, right? Yeah. But none of the murders so far have involved, involved fire, have they? Um, what was the first one? Don't look at me. And the next one was leaky noise. And then revolving dead. And the one that happened at the school was Gotsu on death. It's so disgusting to give names like that to murders. Look, none of them involve fire. Huh? You're right. Caduceus had caught one of the weak points in my argument. I mean, yeah, I don't think... I feel like we should have known that. I don't know why we were like, she's totally involved. It was like, there is a connection, but it's not that she had any. She didn't do it, but there's definitely a connection. You know what I mean? I thought that was strange, too. None of the murders had involved fire, which meant that we had very little evidence to suggest that she was the serial killer. Hey, how about this? Maybe the firewoman was testing her powers or something. Testing? Yeah, she really didn't know what her power was at first, so she started testing different things. And that's why each murder is different. Hmm. Oh, I see. Shin, you're smart. Sarika was impressed, but... But isn't that kind of hard to believe? I didn't want to set it before I could. Is it? It just seems like too much of a stretch, I think. I think so, too. Hmm, yeah, I see. Everyone fell silent. We'd only just started, but there was too much we didn't know. If she is the killer, then why didn't she use her fire? And why did she kill them like that? No, wait. I suddenly got an idea. Hey, Arnimura, I got a question. What is it? You were hanging out with Kunosato a lot, right? Not because I wanted to. Arnimura's disgust was plain. She must have really hated Kunosato. She's doing research into psychic powers, right? Did she say anything about the number of powers a gigalomaniac can have? The number? Yeah, I'd never really thought about it. But is there a rule that a psychic can only have one power? Hmm, I don't know. I can tell you that Kunosato never talked about it, though. And the way real... Uh, booting, the way real booting works is that, in theory, as long as you could control the delusion properly, you could use any power you wanted. In other words, it's possible for a person to have multiple powers. But she seems too angry. I don't think... I feel like they want this... They want us to be like, yeah, I bet she's the killer, and then the fires all start... She's doing something else, and then the fires are starting around where the murders happen while she's doing, you know, whatever. But... I mean, it make it would make sense. Multiple powers, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just... I feel like they want you to think that, so that when the real murderer comes out and it's not pyrokinesis over here, that, like, you're like, <gasps> what? You know what I mean? I think they want to, like, cover it. They want, like, the real murderer to sneak by while they're doing this so that you don't, like, catch on. You know what I mean? It's possible that this is exactly where they're like, well, no, we're totally solving it. But I feel like there's going to be a twist, you know? Ito put his hand on his chin and thought. So the woman who attacked you two wasn't just a pyrokinetic. It's just a possibility, but what do you think? Well, she did terrify us into not being able to move, so I mean, yeah. That's hardly conclusive. Then maybe she has a helper who has different power? A helper? Oh, I get it. So there's more than one person involved. Possibly. Well, actually, yes, we do know. Don't we know that there are multiple people? Because somebody knocked on that dude's door. Ding, ding, ding. And then he, he let... Well, he said them. He did say they and them. But he could have just been saying, like, for, my brain was, like, thinking that that's multiple people, but it could have just been instead of saying he or she, just to cover the identity of. Because if you said he, then it's easier to narrow down your suspects of all the characters you met and be like, it was absolutely Wakui. <laughs> Whereas, you know, 
if they don't say anything, you're like, look at all our friends that could possibly be the murderer. Because you know it's somebody that we've met. You know what I'm saying? They introduced her. I, she's a psychopath trying to kill her. I don't know why she's mad, but like, I don't think... I'm not necessarily sure if she's the killer. Maybe she's involved with them, or they're like having her help somehow. But I don't know if she is. I think she's got a whole other separate thing because i feel like revealing it now well i was like we are in chapter seven now we're getting closer to the end of the common kind of area but i still feel like they want you to think it's her with someone out but it's really somebody else because that's gonna be the twist so hmm. or this takes us back to the start but maybe the pyrokinetic isn't involved in the murders and the real killer is someone else entirely this is what i think in that case, the attack on you is completely unrelated to the murders, right? Yeah. There were too many possibilities to really know what was going on. And she's setting fires around the murders. Hmm. Oh, I can read that one. I can read the new generation pregnant man. Early morning on the 19th of September, and a university student found a man covered... In blood and lying on the ground beneath a bridge near Shibuya Station, the man was a resident of Shibuya Ward named Chizuo Konoe, and was already dead when he was found. His stomach was abnormally swollen. During the autopsy, it was found that the stomach had been cut open and a newborn baby placed inside. It really was the pregnant man. I was just assuming it was something else. A DNA analysis showed no relationship between the baby and the man, and the police believe that someone inserted it there, the strange incident would be the second of the new generation madness murders that terrified the city. <laughs> okay, but what happened to the baby? Are we all thinking the same thing? Like, it was a newborn baby. But is it a dead newborn baby? Were they left a live baby? <laughs> That's some fucked up shit! That's some fucked up shit! I kind of wish we could play Chaos Head, but I don't think... I don't know if you can. Because I don't know... I thought it was on PS2 or 3. It's an older game. You know? And I just... I don't think you could at the time get it to be able to play on PS4. I don't know. Anyway. Hey, why don't we put this aside for now? We're probably not getting anywhere. You're right. Let's leave it for now. You told the police about the woman who attacked you, right? Yes. Did they tell you anything? The night we were attacked, we contacted Shinjo and told him what had happened, along with a description of our attacker. Arimura had said she'd help, uh, helped draw a composite sketch, too. The police had decided to look for her as a suspect in the arson case. If they could find her, they'd arrest her for that. I mean, you can arrest her if you can catch her. She's gonna burn you. Once they had her in custody, then they could find out if she was responsible for the murders. He said he'd call us if he found something, but I haven't heard anything. I don't think they've found who she is. You see, then there's nothing else we can say about her. I think so. My throat was dry from all the talking, so I looked inside my bag. <laughs> I mean, I knew Mountain View was absolutely a knockoff of Mountain Dew. But, like, when they do the, when they do the bottle and it looks exactly like a Mountain Dew, like... I mean, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know why I was expecting it to be different. I saw this, I'm like, <laughs> it really is Mountain Dew. I mean, I knew. You knew, but... Still makes... It's still funny. Anyway, of course I brought a Mountain View. I opened it and took a gulp. I never... Like, I don't hate Mountain Dew. Like, I've had it before, but I don't like... Oh, it's amazing. I don't know. Like... Anyway. Ah. <sighs> Everyone else grabbed a drink of their own and took a moment to relax. Uh, oh, there's a few other things I've been wondering about. Can we talk about them, too? Sure, let's do it. First, all the victims were psychics, right? How did the killer find that out? Ito's question was a good one, and one I'd known was coming. Maybe they have a secret psychic sussing power. I've got an idea about that. I think the killer's using the sumo stickers to track down their victims. The sumo stickers? More precisely, the 11th Warshak test. Remember what we saw in the basement of A.H. Tokyo General? 
Any psychic who sees that sticker is a very strong reaction. Arimura and I have both experienced that for ourselves. Ugh. Just remembering it makes me feel a little sick. Arimura closed her eyes and put her hand over her mouth. She must have felt like she was going to throw up. Uh, are you okay, Arimura? Y yeah, sorry. Keep going, Miyashiro. Okay, Ito and Saraka saw this in the basement at the hospital, but they had cameras all over town watching the stickers. And they were finding people who had the potential to be psychics to, um, experiment on them underground. I could see Kurusu's expression cloud. She probably remembered her friend, Minimisawa Senri, who had been a test subject down there. It hurt to see her like that, but I decided that I had no choice but to go on anyway. She would want you to. She wouldn't want you to call attention to her sadness. So I think the killer might have come from there. If she knew the secret of the stickers, it'd be easy to find psychics, right? She just had to look for people who had a bad reaction when they saw it. For one thing, that woman attacked us when she saw us panicking over the stickers. And the killer's using the cameras down there? No way. You need a card key to get in. And it's been torn apart. And that place is basically abandoned, right? Nobody was watching the stickers and nobody was doing any experiments. No, even without that facility, they could watch the stickers. Huh? Kurusu nodded as if she understood. Yep. I know what Takuru means. As they could just hack the fucking security cameras. They didn't have to watch via the cameras. They could just stand near the stickers and go after anyone who reacted like Takuru and Arimura did. Oh, I was... Okay, that's so much easier. <laughs> I'm like, they could just hack... The security cameras are around. They're... Like, the hospital was hacking into them. The hospital didn't put up the cameras. Those are the security cameras that uh, Kikita's company put up, right? For security. They could just hack the cameras and watch. But, you know what? This is a lot easier than learning how to hack cameras. So, well, far be it from... See, I've watched too many movies. We'll just hack the cameras. Why don't we just stand on the street corner and, like, pretend we're having a conversation or just watch people? There's a bazillion stickers all over. Someone's bound to be puking somewhere. That's right. I think the pyrokinetic was waiting near the stickers, too. Like a spider waiting for something to wander into its web. And then Artimura and I happened by. But the weird thing is, why wasn't she flipping out, too? Well, I guess she's crazy, so... That would take a long time, though. It's not impossible. But... Wait, we won't get any further debating that. Let's go on to the next point. We keep leaving questions unanswered. Is that okay? We don't have a choice. Our goal right now needs to be to get as many questions out there as we can. Ido, is there anything else that's bothering you? It's bothering me the fact that you won't answer my goddamn fucking questions. I'm just kidding. Yeah, two more things. Ido asked his two remaining questions. Summed up, this is what they were. Why are the, num why are the murders taking place on the same day as the New Generation incidents? And why are they happening at all? I mean... Yeah, what's the motive and what? Like, that's the big question, Ito. It's like the whole point of this is to attract a lot of attention. Yeah. Everything from the dates to the way the murders were committed was chosen to be as sensational as possible. Was it just to attract attention or was it a message meant for a specific person? <gasps> it's me. It's all about me. Is that the motive? I know! Like a serial killer, right? They sometimes call those type organized killers. If the murders continue to follow the dates of the new generation madness, the next one will be on the same day as the as Brain Dead, October 23rd. And we got a ways to go. Which also means nothing was going to happen until then. I'm glad it was the 23rd. Because the 24th is my birthday, and I don't want a murder to happen on my birthday. It just ruins everything, I'm just saying. I see. So that's why, although now my birthday is going to be overshadowed by a fucking murder, whatever game. Rude. <laughs> Ito suddenly snapped his fingers as if he'd reached the same great conclusion. Although, we might be playing this game into October, because it's a very long game, so. Then two of you were attacked by the pyrokinetic, but in the end, she didn't kill you. Yeah? Maybe that's because it wasn't the right day yet. The right day? Did that mean it wasn't my power that saved us? Aw. <laughs> no, but it really felt like she was going to kill us. That's the thing. I don't think she's doing it. The more I thought about it, the more confused I felt. 
because it's arson and it's totally different. And do we know that there's been no bodies? Maybe when it's like, you know, if you throw water on a witch, she just melts and you're like, there's weird puddle here in clothes. It's strange. You know what I mean? Like you're Frosty the fucking snowman, right? And like maybe psychics, when a pyrokinetic psychic like let light you on fire, you just turn into a pile of ash and they're like, huh, there's a weird arson and they don't find any bones or body because you just burn up like something to, because you're magical. I mean, I don't know. You don't know. Ito, do you want to light yourself on fire and I'll light myself on fire and then we'll compare our ashes? Really? Do you want to? No, because I don't want to do it either, Ito. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, the more I thought about it, the more confused I felt. You don't know she hasn't killed anyone. Perfect timing. Anyway, so I'm going to wrap this part up here and we will continue and see what the next part brings. So I will see you guys next time. I'm sorry, I have to stretch my backwards. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.